Hey you guys, thanks for joining me for Vanderpump Rules, season 11, episode three. Gossip, dump, and recap. Oh, I've got a lot to tell you. Does anybody think I should do an intervention between Kyle Richards and Lisa Vanderpump since they have so much overlap? I mean, really, truly, we've got Lisa Vanderpump dealing with a huge cheating scandal about an epic relationship, which was Tom Sandoval and Ariana Maddox, which got huge ratings for her and made her show come back from the grave. And we've got Real Housewives of Beverly Hills season 13, Kyle Richards and Mauricio Umansky's relationship on the rocks the entire season. We don't know what's going to happen. They're separated and, you know, indefinitely. Maybe they could bond on that basis. And then, of course, Kyle Richards has lost a dear friend of hers. And then Lisa Vanderpump lost her brother. And surely there must be some bridge that could be created there from, you know, that mutual feeling of loss all around that they both have at the same time. I think Alex Baskin needs to get on that right away and make some sort of treaty happen between Lisa and Kyle. It would be perfect for Alex and it would help your show Alex a lot more than uh, putting a barcode up during tonight's um, episode of Watch What Happens Live. <laughs> it's tough, isn't it? It's tough to get people to listen. Uh, not as easy as you thought, huh? <laughs> I love seeing him keep trying to make it happen. All right, you guys. So in order to get the most out of tonight's episode, we have to know who Nima Vand is. Nima Vand is a cast member of season seven of Shaw's of Sunset. He hates Reza. He uh, was on the same season that got canceled. He's since left Los Angeles, moved to New York, and became a director. He actually directed Ariana's Duracell video. Let me show you a picture. Here he is with Ariana after directing the Duracell ad, and he's doing really well in that now. He still hangs out with Bravo celebrities from time to time just to party with them, uh, that's his thing. Anyway, he dated Rachel Levis for one month. I'm gonna play you a little bit of the story. And he went on Sheena Shea's podcast, which is a big part of tonight's show. I'm gonna play you the soundbite. It upset Tom Sandoval on tonight's show. He said that he was really upset when he heard this show because he felt that it was really unfair to Rachel Levis and she was very upset over it and had to be like talked off a cliff by him. And Sheena Shea was like, look, I don't want to be seen as a liar. So of course I'm going to share what I knew. I didn't say who it was from. And he's like, well, it's pretty obvious when Nima went on your show and spilled all the tea. So this was a point of contention between Tom Sandoval and Sheena Shea tonight. Now, Nima is really hard to trust in some ways. He really spoke almost 20 minutes on Sheena Shea's show about how he didn't really want Rachel Levis and he gave it a shot, but he wasn't into her and he kept trying to push her on other people and get her to like Tom Schwartz and get her off him and all these things. And like, she wanted him so badly. And he says also in one part of the interview that he heard that she said that she didn't want him, but then she did want him. But needless to say, a, a bit much to spend 20 minutes of the Sheena Shea podcast talking about how Rachel Levis wanted him so badly. It gave me total 1,000 ick vibes, okay? Like, relax, guy. We, we know you're hot. I've said on the show this season, and I've never said your name. And uh, since we decided to do a podcast this week, I was like, well... Maybe. I, don't think you, I don't think you need to beat around the bush. I also think the audience doesn't deserve that. I think the reality of this is in April of last year, April? Yeah, it May, was April because Coachella was April I was, of last year. Yeah, I, I had like a one month hang with Raquel. Yes. Right? And that was, that was what went down. And you 
really kind of pushed that. You were like really into it, but I was also because like, in, in the beginning, I'm like, she's cute, she's fun, like, why not? So this all came up, right? Raquel and I are sitting at a bar in Hollywood one night. She's depressed over James. She's afraid to get back in the dating world. She doesn't want to go on any apps. And I was like, you know what? I have the perfect guy for you. And it's perfect because he doesn't even live in L.A. But the next time he's in L.A. or the next time we're in New York, let's set up a date. I've been on a few dates with him. More than two. Two. More than two. Two. I, like, there was two in one day. That's one day. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. (laughs) Anyway. A few. And I was like, he's such a gentleman. Great conversation. Like, he is the perfect person to go on a first date with. She ended up going, like, a Peter Madrigal route as well, which I thought was a great... That was after, wasn't it? It was, but, like, for the show, like, that was also, like, the first... It was great for her to date him because they were friends and... Yes, do it. So, I pushed it, and uh, you went for it. We were supposed to come out to New York. Because I was in a place in my life where I was just like, I'm single, I'm thriving. Yeah. Why not? Cute yeah. girl, why not? That's totally. Amazing. So we made plans to come to New York to actually see a Tom Sandoval's in the most extras concert, but our flight got delayed, 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 canceled. I was like, That's we're not supposed Sandoval to be in New York. Was there. Yeah. No, I was wondering why he was at your live taping. Yeah. I met Raquel at a live taping for Sheena, and I literally met her in the green room. I was doing the show. Raquel was doing the show. The green room, it was like, hi, nice to meet you, by the way, like... What's going on? Like, we've been texting a little bit. Like, yeah, that kind because of the thing. trip before that was the one that got canceled. Right. So then we're all back in New York. You guys hang out. Yada, yada, yada. Whatever. But. Well, there's a couple things lost in that yada. Yes, that's Let's what I'm saying. Let's not gloss over the yada. So I want to get to that because that show was in May. So to set the scene. Yep. It was the night before Hannah Burner's wedding, yep. I believe. We went to Hannah Burner's wedding. And that was May 13th. Yep. So yep. we're. Mid May, yep. Coachella was about a month before. Yep. You and uh, Raquel started hanging out, and she told you a story about Coachella, which I repeated to Ariana. I repeated on the reunion, well, but I didn't even give you a gender. I just said this person. Now he goes on for a second and talks about how him and Rachel Levis went partying with a lot of the Southern Charm people and. Tom Schwartz happened to be there and Rachel Levis told him several times that she thought Tom Schwartz was hot and that she thought she might go for him on the season of Vanderpump Rules that she does, okay? And he's egging her on and all this stuff, which I'm sure didn't make Tom Sandoval feel good hearing this show, but that's what he says and he does a whole bit about this. They jump around a lot. It makes it hard to follow. I'm doing my best to edit it for you. I was like, I can't go. And I was texting Raquel. I was like, yo, I can't go. You know, you, your booking was a four-day booking. If you wanted to book through, like, your wedding website, it was a four-day thing. Right. So I was like, I maybe, I was trying to rationalize, like, could I go down Tuesday in and out? And she was like, you could stay with me, like, in my room. Like, you could totally just, like, maybe we can make it a thing. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm, all, I'm just going to put your name on my room anyway. And so I knew at that point I had to, like, pivot away from this and be like, yeah, like, yeah, like, maybe. But, like, I just was, like, backpedaling the fuck out of this. Because I knew, outside of not being Man, inter- she was stacked that week in Cancun. How did she have the time? What they're going to do, because they're tracking a Raquel Schwartz story, right? That's a story. Bravo track stories. Is, I, you were like, they're going to they're gonna want to mic you. I knew it. I, the minute you said that, I was like, I know exactly what's going to happen. They're going to cut to a shot of me. Maybe I'm just like sitting there having a drunk moment, just like taking in the ocean, like like just zenning out, having the time of my life. And they're going to cut to like her and Schwartz kissing and then back to me, like lonely, <laughs> depressed, divorce guy. You know what I mean? And I, knew, I, I told MJ. The scenarios was, we play out in our heads. MJ in was like 100%. When in reality, I would be like, go, like go do that. But I knew that that was going to be twisted the wrong way. So I was like, I can't for a variety of reasons. Beyond just no, not wanting totally. to be in her room alone, I can't. So we kind of fizzled out. We stayed friends for a while. And, you know, you lose contact. Like, you don't, you, you check in, you like a photo here and there, you kind of just fizzle out. And then you guys came for Watch What Happens Live. Mm-hmm. The dreaded weekend. So I was like, cool, I haven't seen Raquel in a minute. I always <sighs> make time to see you. Let's all go to Soho House. Yeah. Take you guys Soho House. She sits down and she, her energy is so fucking weird. Like, mm-hmm. so, do you remember? I was like, what's wrong you with you? You made a comment. I was like, what's wrong with you? Like, what's, yeah. like, what's, what's going on? And she was like, that's rude. And I remember I was at VaynerMedia about to, like, I was prepping a shoot. And you called me. And I was like, she never calls me in a day. It's like, this whole text or something. 
and you were just like, you are not going to fucking believe what went down. And you basically explained to me the whole, I grabbed her phone, I threw her phone, like she, came, I mean, the two things that always stuck out to me where you said I threw, I threw her phone and you said she came out with her phone and you were like, she was talking to Ariana the way that you would order like an Uber. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was like so apathetic. And I was like, wow, that's like really weird because like, I could hear someone crying on the phone. I'm like, who is it? The story's been told. Go back to hang in with Schwartz. Go back to us at that happy hour, whatever that thing was. We're talking. She's not in love with me pushing the Schwartz thing because I'm just like, marry him, date him. I think I said the whole show should be Schwartz is the bachelor and all of you are fighting. I was laying it on so thick. Just be like, please date him. And she mentioned to me, she was like, yeah, you know, it's funny because at Coachella, it wasn't Schwartz. It was Sandoval that like said something to me. And I was like, what does that mean? She was like, well, we were in the hot tub till like five in the morning. Like, we watched the sunrise together. And I have the video. She sent me a selfie. I've showed it to you mm -hmm. of her and like Sandoval. I think, is that your house? No, they had their own house. Great. In a hot tub, sun's coming up. They're the... They're in the pool. I guess Jesse might have been there or not. But at one point, she was like, yeah, it was really weird. Like, Tom said to me. And by the way, it's like, it wasn't Schwartz. It was Sandoval that kind of said something weird to me. And I was like, what, is that? what does that mean? Because I was like, well, what, Sandoval? Like, and she was like, yeah, he kind of was just like, oh, you know. And again, I don't know that Tom ever said this. I can only go off of what Raquel said to me. This is all alleged. Allegedly, allegedly. He, she was like, you know, Tom allegedly was like, you know, like, we have, like, an open thing. Like, we can hook up with whoever we want. And I was like, oh, do they? Because I'm like, I don't know. I don't know that intricacies. Why would you know they're Yeah, and right. she was like, no, I don't. Raquel was smart. <laughs> Excuse me. Raquel was smart to it. She was like, no, I think he's just like planting the seed that like you and I could hook up here and it would be totally okay because we're alone in the hot tub because it's totally okay in our relationship. So she knew exactly what he was. She was very like, for being a Bambi, you guys make fun of her. She knew exactly what he was doing. And I think female intuition is a real thing. So if she has that, I have no idea if Tom actually said it. I only know what Raquel. Right. Told me but that. she told you that. I don't think she just made up that story. Unequivocally, 100 percent. She tried to fuck me in your bed. Yeah. Like literally, like we went and like hung out at your house. I was like, OK, I, I, don't, I, I felt bad. I didn't want to like I was like, isn't that Sheena's like bedroom? And she was like, where yeah. my child would also sleep with us occasionally. With the fucking, like glow lights on the sky. And I was yeah. like, I can't do this. This feels like a fucking summer camp. So now, you know, anyone who is listening unequivocally 100 percent take it from me sheena is telling the truth and then by the way he called mj his bravo mom i know like just don't just don't say anything at all dude i mean i don't know mj but i'm sticking up for her on that one like nobody wants to be called the bravo mom okay no no. So another thing that happened this week is that ali luber went on sheena shea's show and said that teddy mellon <laughs> Sorry, uh, Camp um, and Tamara Judge lied about her getting uh, physically assaulted by James Kennedy after the MTV Awards, and she wanted to set the record straight about that. I mean, would she really say if he did hit her? I don't think so, but it sounds like they were pretty inebriated. I think it's pretty clear at this point that James Kennedy does bad things when he drinks, which is why he should be sober and is sober on the current season and seem to be sober on Watch What Happens Live tonight. Kudos to him. Better to just stay sober. Now, I have to say this to you guys. I did a podcast uh, with a narcissist abuse expert, Vanessa Reiser, who also wrote a book that was published. And we went through the attributes of a narcissist, the symptoms of a narcissist. And one of the symptoms of a narcissist is making someone feel uncomfortable on purpose. And if you remember on last week's episode, Lala pointed out that Tom Sandoval enjoyed having Ariana in the house because it made her feel uncomfortable. And whenever he would do things that would like push the envelope with her, like the white machine and the birthday party and all this stuff, that that was a symptom of narcissism. And I wanted to say that it is. And actually, if you wanna learn more about why narcissists do what they do, which make no sense to normal people, you should really go listen to that show. I did release 30 minutes free. I think a lot of Bravo celebrities should listen to it because they're gonna really know that a lot of their cast members they're with have the attribute, which is why they make good TV, but you know, lack of impulse control, 
but it also means they need to be really extra careful when they're around them. So anyway, thought I would point that out to you guys. If you missed that one, you should definitely listen to it. We also go through a bunch of reality stars and I give you examples in the show of them doing narcissistic things as we talk about the symptoms. It's shocking the patterns that are all the same. Every single pattern is the same. So it's so crazy. I thought I was alone, I'm not. It felt so good to know this. So now we're at the second half of Tom Sandoval's 41st birthday. Tom Schwartz finally pops into the scene. He tells Tom Sandoval that maybe he needs to be more humble and not get so activated when people call him out about the Ariana thing because it's gonna make him miserable and really make it hard on him with the rest of the group. And Tom Sandoval seems to hear it, but not really. Tom Schwartz, in a really awkward way, leaves Tom Sandoval's birthday to go see Sheena Shea at the emo party. And they're all uh, DJing there, if you remember from last week. And when he gets there, Sheena Shea is pissed because he missed her singing an emo version of Good As Gold. And she's like, I can't believe you missed my set. It was at 10.30 and he's like, I'm so sorry. And she's just like, you really let me down. And meanwhile, you know, something that's not being said in the storytelling of Bravo is that Tom Schwartz has hidden the entire relationship with Rachel Levis and Tom Sandoval, but not from like midway, like we were made to believe on the Watch What Happens Live interviews and all this stuff. From the very beginning, all the way through, even now, okay, no, not now, but all the way through to like the point where Ariana and Tom Sandoval are already estranged in the house. Rachel Levis said that it was Schwartz who was supposed to hide the letters she was sending and all this stuff if the assistant Anne couldn't get them. So he was just always a partner in crime in this affair and hiding it. So it's no wonder that Ariana is so angry at Tom Schwartz and they don't really tell that story, which is unfair in the show. Then we cut to Billy Lee and Tom Sandoval having like a heartfelt moment at the birthday party. And she's like, you gotta be you, you gotta live this life for you. And we see his friend Kyle Chan hanging out with him, trying to help him. Everybody's trying to help Tom Sandoval. And it, anyway, that's that. And, and by the way, Sheena Shea implied that Tom Sandoval and maybe Billy Lee at one point hooked up, which really upset Tom Sandoval. He says it on tonight's show. So I suppose that was somewhat of a buildup of that as there well. There definitely was an uncool factor to his 41st birthday, if I want to be that pretentious, but I'll pretend I'm in LA. Like I, you definitely would have skipped it. But what really wrecked his head was Rachel Levis never called him. And he's like, I am still in love with her. She's like my best friend. And she never called me from her mental health facility. I was talking to her a few times a week and now I'm not talking to her at all and I thought at least I'd hear from her on my birthday. But no such luck. Good for Rachel. So then we jump to Katie and Ariana there in the morning. Katie's shocked that the house is so clean. It's Anne, the assistant, who does it. And Ariana's got her IV in. She's getting her hangover gone and so is Katie. And they're bonding on this moment. And Katie's just like, I really do not approve of Tom Schwartz being in Sheena Shea's life. Because Sheena Shea seems to be coming from a place where she feels bad for him. But, you know, it's just uncomfortable for the rest of us. And she doesn't know what she's protecting, in other words. So then we get some tea in a scene between Tom Sandoval and Lisa Vanderpump. Essentially what happens is Tom Sandoval says to Lisa, I think I wanted to off myself at certain points. And Lisa's like, I called you from the car after the reunion. You told me you would never consider something like that. And he said, I know I said that, but it got too much to bear. And I really did think about it. And this scares the crap out of Lisa because she thinks of her brother. And so she's like, oh my God, you know, I, I could lose a friend or a cast member or one of my employees in a way, you know, to something like this. And I can't be responsible for that basically is what comes across. By the way, you guys, did you notice Tom Sandoval had all of his knuckles band-aided in the scene with Lisa Vanderpump? 
I think he hit something. Then Lala does a scene where she says she hopes James Kennedy would get sober, but she can't force him to reach out to her. And she's like, I'm an AA. I would love him to come and join me because it's a wonderful existence. But I think the read between, between the lines here is that Lala wants him to get sober. So then Sheena Shea and Katie Maloney sit down and have mocktails together. Very few people drinking on the show at this time. And they decide to discuss that Tom Schwartz really doesn't play a great active part in either of their lives. And Sheena's like, he let me down again. And I realize why am I putting myself on a limb because I feel bad for someone who can't even make it to my set on time and is prioritizing Tom Sandoval over me after, you know, all the awful things he did to the group. And she's like, I just think I need to stop with him, Tom Schwartz. Tom Schwartz stops by Lisa Vanderpump's rescue to have his dogs uh, groomed. And while there, he talks to Lisa and she tells him that she was shocked to hear Sandoval was thinking of offing himself and she was really concerned about that. And she went into huge thing with Schwartz and he was like, yeah, I heard that from the grapevine. And then he said, I've been dealing with my own stuff. My brother may have cirrhosis of the liver which of course would kill him and he's got a, a drinking addiction and we don't know what to do about it and he's really sick and lisa's like i'm really sorry to hear that and they have that scene and moment and we sort of feel bad for tom schwartz so lisa said a weird thing she was like ariana seems to be living her best life so like maybe you know the group could move on but i was like yeah but that doesn't really have anything to do with what she went through with the cheating. You know, one does not have anything to do with the other. So I thought that was like a weird rationale. Like, okay, so your life is good, so forget that your boyfriend like crushed your heart and betrayed you so deeply and destroyed your world. I don't know, it just didn't feel equal to me. Perhaps that's how Lisa Vanderpump processed cheating in her relationship. But anyway, we get excited about Wolf because Lisa's opening a new place in Lake Tahoe and everybody's going to meet there and it's going to be a big thing. Schwartz has given the job to go around and invite everybody and hint that Tom Sandoval will also be invited. And of course, the cast is going because it's a TV show. And so uh, this is where this all kind of comes about. And then we see Tom Sandoval and Sheena Shea get together and have a chat, a very difficult This chat. is the big moment that you watch the beginning of this video for. Tom is like, I cannot believe you had Nima on your show saying awful things about Rachel Levis. Really bad. I had to talk her off a ledge. And Sheena's like, well, I was just making sure everyone knew the truth. And then she said, I, of course, don't want to hurt you or Rachel. But, you know, I had to do my show and tell the truth. And Tom was like, well, you know, you went on and on and on and on and on and interviewed everybody. And she said, and then we didn't. And then we stopped. And then she said, your uh, friendship with me, you should have reached out. You shouldn't have blocked me. You you know, you really made a big mistake. He was like, I know, I apologize to you, but then I felt like you were just dragging me across the world and it was like too much for me to bear. And she's like, you could try being humble and saying you're sorry and like acknowledging all these awful things you did. And you know, I have a big heart and, but you know, this is too much or so selfish and, you know, basically implies that you know, he's a narcissist or that he is a narcissist. And then he says, no, I'm not the narcissist Lala is. And she's like, I'm not listening to this. And that's where it goes. Okay. <laughs> Ta -da -da. That's the end of the episode. Okay. I'm not going to lie. I think the Patreons got more action than this episode did. <laughs> just, just this last week's. All right, you guys like subscribe, hit the notification button and tell people about the channel, share it, retweet my tweets, please. Let people know it's fun on here. Big kiss.